Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fisker's Product Vision Day. Our program is about to begin. Please take your seat and enjoy the show. Gentlemen, your host for today, Andrew Jamison, Head of Entertainment Partnerships for Fisker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Fisker Huntington Beach, our 46,664 square foot flagship vehicle processing center where we can do everything, including delivery prep, service, test drives, and of course, Fisker Product Vision Day 2023. Today will be our first ever look beyond the Fisker Ocean and into Fisker's vision of the future of electric mobility. My name is Andrew Jamison. I'll be your host. Welcome to our guests, our investors, board members, members of the financial analyst community, members of the press, and everyone watching on live stream. In 2016, Henrik Fisker and Dr. Gita Gupta Fisker founded this company on the shared vision of a clean future for all. From then, through the evolution to a publicly traded company and to right now, Fisker is a visionary new kind of EV company built to achieve one mission, to design the world's most emotional and sustainable vehicles. Today, we'll meet the next Fisker electric vehicles that realize that transformational vision. We're going to see how sustainability, design, and innovation breathe life and excitement into these EVs. You will see things that are breathtaking. You will see things that are innovative. And in the words of the man coming to the stage, you will see things that are super cool. So please join me in welcoming Chairman, CEO, and designer Henrik Fisker. Hey, yeah. you, you were supposed to walk out, man. It's like 20 feet. Why are you driving? Hey, this is L.A. Nobody walks. I even drive to my mailbox, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair point. But why, why is the car here? The car is here because this is where it all started. Yeah. And we want to talk a little bit about the Fisker Ocean, and I want to give you the keys. The valet is out front, man. I know, but I need to make all right, a speech. All right, fine. I'll all take right, it. Thank you. All right, you got it. <laughs> all right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really excited for today. And... I'm super excited that everybody came today, and for those of you who's watching at home, thank you very much and welcome. Uh, you know, this is a very proud moment for Fisker, and it's also a unique moment in time where, uh, you know, we have placed ourselves as a movement to su su sustainable mobility and to have a cleaner world for the next generation. We are focused as bu at building Fisker as a scalable business. We eventually want to make hundreds of thousands of vehicles per year, and eventually a million vehicles per year. And we think the path to that is actually to create exciting products. Products that people want, that are well-designed, clean, and high-quality EVs. And at Fisco, we are now entering our next phase. The EV market is maturing, we are scaling up, and customers are becoming more accepting of new EV companies like us. And we are very, very proud about that. We see a lot of new customers coming to us. In fact, 70% of our customers that have reserved the ocean has never owned an EV before. 
Now, it's been an exciting ride and a very ambitious challenge to build and deliver the ocean. As we seriously ramp up deliveries, this is a great time to pause and take a breath and reflect on how far we have come. In only about three years, we started to build up Fisker as a company. Started the ocean program. We started with about, 100, about 150 employees about three years ago. Today, we are over 1,000 employees. And we have now developed the ocean. We have started the production. We have started deliveries, both in US and Europe. And all that in just three years. We started on a blank sheet of paper, building an EV company from scratch. And we are innovating, we are growing, we are learning quickly. And we are on a steep growth curve. This is really a unique moment. So now, to the owners who are taking delivery and are sharing their excitement with the family and friends on social media, to the customers who is putting in the orders, to the supporters and everyone who is watching, I would like to say thank you. I would like to say thank you for the enthusiasm. Thank you for sharing our vision of a clean future for all. So now let's, forward, let's look forward to what's next. We are designing the world's most sustainable and emotional vehicles for the global market. And we are going to meet the EVs we'll deliver in the next few years. And what they all have in common, what they have in common is sustainability. It drives every choice that we make. Emotional design. Our EVs are designed to create excitement, emotional excitement, both when you look at them, when you're driving, and whether you're the biggest car enthusiast who loves power, or whether you're looking for a smart, stylish, functional EV that you can love driving every day, those are the type of vehicles we want to build. Innovation. Each Fisker has to have at least four unique features that has to be either best in class or nobody else have. If a vehicle doesn't have that when it starts getting on the drawing board, we won't even make it. We plan to stand out. We want to excite our customers with great California-inspired design. We want to be cool. We want to be different. We want to do things that you have never seen before. So let's go. Let's see the car that launched our journey, the Fisker Ocean. If I could tell you only one thing about the ocean, I would tell you this. The Fisker Ocean have the longest EV range of any electric EV in the world, in its class. I think that's pretty amazing. You know, this was a key design objective that we achieved, but it was the goal from the beginning but it took incremental gains to be able to do this. There was a lot of small details that had to work. And we had to massage, we had to work on to get to this world's longest range. I mean, there were several integrated aerodynamic features 
that we had to kind of invent to really get to that point. Underbody aero, we spent a lot of time on. Grill shutters, air curtains around the wheel wells, as you can see, these orange areas here. That's where the, the you know, air curtains come out. And then the super efficient powertrain with rear disconnect. And of course, the 22 inch wheels, we actually have created together with our wheel supplier, super low rolling resistant wheels. And all these things together is actually how we achieve this goal. Of course, we also got an amazing battery pack, super energy dense, energy dense in the Fisker Ocean as well. And coming to sustainability, the Fisker Ocean is built in a carbon neutral factory powered by renewable energy. And that's not an accident. We chose all our suppliers who were committed to sustainability. That's what's super important for us because we always say how it's made matters. We pay very close attention to using as much recycled materials or bio-based materials as possible. Sustainability is one of our most important brand values. And you're gonna hear more about that later today. We like to innovate for sustainability. And give you an example of that would be the solar sky roof, which can actually give you 1,500 free and clean miles a year. And every time you park your car outside and you come back to it, you will actually see that it might have a slightly more range because you just get that free power. And when you make a car with timeless design that's upgradable, with over-the-air updates, you're making a car that you can enjoy all the time. And I mean not just like the first year, the first two years, as long as you have the car and even the next person. What we plan to do is deliver over-the-air updates every month, sometimes maybe every, every, every week. It all depends. Whenever we have some improvements, whenever we have something new, we want to do it with over the upgrades, which means your car gets better and better and better. And in fact, it means that some of the first reservation holders or people who's already got their car, they're actually going to be part of getting some feedback that where we can keep improving ourselves because, you know, that's how the car world works right now. That's how the world is, is with software. You've got to keep improving it as we move forward. And we have a clear strategy on how to do that. Now, this car, of course, is also made for people who love driving. I mean, I think I've done more than 10,000 miles in this vehicle, both in Europe on the Autobahn and here in the U.S. And I can tell you, the car has amazing road holding. It's fast. It's fun to drive in all situations. And in fact, the Ocean chassis was set up in collaboration with race car driver Abby Eaton. Of course, we got California mode. I put it on as I came in. You saw it in the video. All windows, roof opens up for that super convertible feeling. That's really unique to Fisker. And especially, you know, on days like this, it's just great to be able to not only use your car as a utility SUV, but actually just to open everything up and feel like you're driving a convertible. And of course, we got the rotating screen that makes your car into a home movie theater. And it goes with that amazing stereo system. I don't know how many who has got their ocean have tried to really put that high up, but it's actually quite amazing. And finally, the performance specs. You know, zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. And in boost mode, you have available 564 horsepower. Now, to enjoy all that, we actually created three driving modes. We have the earth mode, which is exactly what it means, saving the earth. You're spending as little energy as possible to get from, where you, from A to B. And that is a driving mode that if you truly want to save energy, you drive that mode. Then we got the fun mode, and that's exactly what that means. It's fun. It's fun to drive this vehicle. And then you got the hyper mode, and that is when you're in that hyper mode where you want to drive fast, you want to have instant torque, instant acceleration. It's just amazing. All right, now, and that's why the next big piece of our product vision was to take the ocean one step further. We wanted to create the ultimate electric off-road vehicle. That doesn't really kind of for me exist in this segment yet, and we wanted to be the first one. So we created an off-road vehicle we call the Force E. Let's take a look at the Force E.
So the fourth E is our special new kind of electric off-roading. And it's a great package for a new kind of driving. And also, I would say, you know, when, you, when we did this vehicle, we were really thinking about people who actually go out in nature. I would think they would want to go out in nature with an electric vehicle, enjoy nature, not polluting the nature they enjoy so much. So the 4C will be the cleanest and most sustainable all-wheel drive off-road vehicle available. Now, what's unique about this off-road edition is that it's actually an add-on package that even if you already bought your, your ocean or, or getting your ocean this year, you can still order this package and we will put it on for you. You can, of course, also order a new vehicle with this package on it. And let me talk to you a little bit about this vehicle. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a beast. Look at how wide it is. It's got extra wide fenders here with a really cool graphic. Those wheels are huge, 33-inch wheels sitting on 20-inch aluminum rims. Pretty cool. Well, of course, it's also durable and it's made for off-road. So, for example, we have a higher gr ground clearance and we also have a protective underbody uh, plate under here. And then we have structural front and rear skid plates. And then we have specialized dampers. And of course, we have great ramp angles, both front and rear. So this is really a unique design. This package is going to be available in Q1 next year already. And we will talk about pricing a little closer to that. So that's the Force E. Thank you. <laughs> hey. That car is a beast, without a doubt. doubt. Um, it's a beast. But I have to ask you, who is this car for? Who do you see driving this? Well, I think it's kind of for people who love nature, love sustainability, like being together with animals. And it may also be people who actually like to go to those super Bigfoot rallies. What is that called? Oh, like the monster truck rallies? The monster truck okay. rallies, you know. Right. You, I love those, by the way. Right. So Classic I think it's also people like to go to monster truck rallies. And why can't we combine the two? Great monster truck rallies going off-road with sustainable electrification. Classic combination. That would be cool. All right. So you mentioned 50 kilos. Mm. Talk me through that. What does is, what is 50 kilos look like? So 50 kilos of plastic bottles before they're recycled actually looks like this. And I'm going to go a little closer over here. Come over and take a look yeah. at how big this really a is. Gorgeous, I mean, gorgeous art piece of trash. Yeah, it's a gorgeous art piece of trash. But, you know, it's kind of made like a wave. Yeah. But what it really gives you the idea about, also for everybody watching at home, is how many plastic bottles goes into 50 kilos of recyclable materials. And imagine what you do for the environment by buying a Fisker Ocean where you get rid of all these bottles. I think that's really cool, by the way. Yeah. All right, so I think, I think we need to take a look at our sustainability vision and get a little bit into detail. So let's take a look. When we challenged ourselves to create the world's most emotional and sustainable vehicle, we had to think differently. We had to innovate. We had to push the boundaries to not just create a car, but a movement. Every Fisker Ocean is produced with over 50 kilograms of ethically sourced recycled materials. That's the equivalent of 110 pounds of single-use plastic waste. We use less, we use better, and we use again. We design our interiors with eco-friendly, plant-based materials. It's unparalleled luxury, comfort, and durability. Our responsibility to the planet thrives in the Fisker Ocean. Every detail, from the smallest stitch to the aluminum and steel in the body, is thoughtfully crafted in a carbon-neutral facility. The Fisker Ocean not only looks good, but it feels good to help the planet. It's about accomplishing something bigger than itself. A clean future for all. And with the lowest carbon footprint of any electric SUV in production, our North Star is well within reach. At Fisker, we believe that how it's made matters. And that's why we created the world's most emotional and sustainable vehicle.
On their first day at work, each new Fisker employee is asked to consider every decision they make through two key questions. First, are we doing the best we can for the environment? And second, are we doing the best we can for the fair treatment of people? So to share how Fisker answers these questions every day, please welcome Head of ESG, uh, Patrick Newsom, Head of Materials and Interior Design, Nadia Arnott, and Moderator, Kerry Roberts. Kerry? Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. Welcome. Nadia, Patrick, so great to sit here today to talk to you guys. Interested to learn a little bit about sustainability. Everybody ready for that? Yes? Absolutely. Awesome. All right, you ready? To, let's go ahead and jump into it. So. How does sustainability show up in your day-to-day -day work here at Fisker? I, I think first off, you know, Fisker is dedicated to being a clean, fair, and ethical company from the very beginning. And sustainability gives us an opportunity to create beautifully designed vehicles uh, that are better for the environment and offer a cleaner choice to our customers. It's essential to our company vision. Love that, love that. So what's the day-to-day -day work you have to do to create this social impact that you're talking about? You know, um, human rights, dignity, fair labor practices, diversity, equity, and inclusion is crucial to what we do as a company. We hold ourselves and our supply chain accountable to these principles. So as a sustainable company, how does Fisker lower the environmental impact when making an electric car? It's challenging, but simply put, you know, we minimize the amount of materials and the amount of energy that we need, and we avoid waste in every way we can. But how can you really be sure, though, you know, I mean, that you're really actually effectively making, you know, a, a, an impact in, and just, you know, on the planet, you know, here? Like, how do you know you're really doing that and really being sustainable in that you're, way? You're, you're digging in. I like it. Um, okay. So, you know, it is, it is a challenging thing, like I said, but we do the very best we can and then we measure what we've done through scientific methods. And we use these learnings to push our work forward. And so recently we've published a, an LCA, Life Cycle Assessment of the Fisker Ocean. And this is a, a look, it's a full footprint measured in metric tons of carbon, CO2. So it's a CO2 footprint over the entire life cycle of the vehicle, starting in raw material sourcing all the way through end of use and vehicle recycling. Got it. So you mentioned sourcing. So that's like sourcing metals, plastics, rubber, you know, everything that you need materials for to, to make a vehicle. But what type of material choices does Fisker make to be more sustainable? So for future vehicles, we're really pushing the limits. Uh, we're looking into lightweight and innovative options. For example, um, algae content or cork content. Actually, the Force E has algae content in the interior materials. Uh, also, instead of uh, virgin materials, we max our recycled content in every material we or material type that we use: steel, aluminum, carbon fiber, polymers, nylons, whatever you can think of that goes on a car. And that put us at well over 50 kilos of recycled and bio-based materials wow. on the ocean, which is actually more than any other EV vehicle has currently. 50 kilos. It's a lot. How big is that? Yeah, right here. a lot. I guess that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it. it's this. It's this, right. <laughs> right? I and mean, this is a good example of just seeing it visually, understanding what goes into the vehicle. But I, I think it's important to point out this represents the amount of recycled polymers that we have in the vehicle. The total recycled content is, is much more than that. Interesting. So yeah. let's talk about manufacturing process then. So what's one way during the manufacturing process that Fisker reduces climate impact this time? Well, I, I think Hendrik mentioned it earlier, right? So the, the Fisker Ocean is produced in a carbon neutral factory and it's powered by renewable technologies like solar and hydroelectric. And coupling that with so many of the efficiencies that we've built into our process, it's, it's reduced our potential tons of, of CO2 by, by a lot. Wow. So I, I think, you know, we're all learning a lot about it takes a lot of parts to manufacture a car. So how can you use less energy there? Nadia? I think a key factor is consumption reduction. And for us, that means a reduction in parts on the vehicles. Um, we optimize loads, um, routing for efficiency, reducing packaging wherever possible. Uh, but a big factor is for us proximity. Um, and it, it's actually an advantage for us because over 75% of parts that come from our tier one suppliers uh, is within 650 miles of our 
manufacturing location in Austria. So that's actually uh, quite the achievement absolutely. of everyone to <laughs> organize all that. I'm sure, absolutely. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit. I'm gonna throw you a little two-part question. You guys ready for that? So let's talk about the phases of the vehicle. So the use and maintenance phase are the years where you drive the ocean. So let's just say if I'm driving the ocean for 125,000 miles, how do you reduce the impact of the energy used to charge it for all those miles? And number two, you ready, Patrick? Number two, and how does that compare to the carbon footprint of a gas-powered car? Okay, so my first response is stacking up the questions doesn't seem quite fair, but I'll, I'm going to start with the second one first. Um, so over 125,000 miles, how does the driving a Fisker Ocean compare to driving a gas-powered vehicle? It's, it, it's the equivalent of taking a high-speed train between Amsterdam and Paris over 1,000 times. Back and forth, back and forth. It's back a beautiful forth. view. But yeah, it right. sounds like it. So the other part is that, oh, the other question, sorry, I skipped this. I, was gonna, I reversed it and skipped I the first question. I was going to ask question. it again. So um, one, of the big, one of the big factors to lower our carbon footprint during the charging phase is we've partnered with charging networks that have more supply of renewable energy. And this is a really key factor in helping us lower our emissions during this phase. Amazing. So next phase would be the last phase, which is end of use. When the vehicle comes off the road, how much of the Fisker Ocean can be recycled? Nadia, I know you know the answer to this one. Yes, so end of use, very important topic for us. We started very early in the ocean development phase to pay attention to that, and it's brought us to a 95% recoverability and an 85% recyclability on the ocean, but we're working on pushing those numbers even more so. Um, we also prioritize partners that have a commitment to sustainable practices, and we use whatever data they can give us for end-of-use information. Good. So we mentioned a little bit today about this life cycle assessment. So what are the results of this study, that, this assessment that you, you guys are talking about so much uh, today? I'd love, to, I'd love to address <laughs> that one. Um, so I, it's really, you know, the... The Fisker Ocean is, is making a small footprint, but a very big impact. So we're proud to say that we have the lowest published carbon footprint of any vehicle in our class, any EV SUV. As a matter of fact, the Fisker Ocean Sport is 20% lower than our nearest competitor. And that's, you know, really where we're giving our, our customers a cleaner choice. Yeah. Um, also a reference, you, you took the train Paris-Amsterdam, but to have a a reference of carbon saved by driving an electric ocean versus a gas-powered vehicle over its lifetime is very substantial. And the other reference would be it's about equal to 39 acres of forest. So big amount. A lot of trees. Audience, that is a lot of trees, right? A lot. It's a lot of trees. <laughs> I can even imagine that in, 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 you know, in my head. Like that's, that, that just seems forever and ever trees. I've tried to count them, but it's just yeah. too difficult. <laughs> Um, so I, I think it's important also to point out that the LCA is a tool to measure sustainability, but it's more than that for us. It's a planning tool, right? So we take what we learn from the, the assessment, from that carbon measurement, and we use it for uh, planning for all of our future vehicles as well, to be able to reduce as much as we possibly can, and to forge our path to create a climate-neutral vehicle by 2027. This is, one of our, this is one of our big goals. You know, clearly we're challenging convention. We're, we're making a radical shift to be able to design and build a car and use a car as sustainably as possible. I mean, this is really how to make the world's most sustainable vehicles. Wow. I mean, this, it's truly a testament, you know, to Fister's commitment to sustainability. All right, I see Andrew, so that must be our time. Thank you so much, <laughs> Nadia, and thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, and now, the next EV in Fisker's sustainable all-electric lineup. Let's get the first ever look at what we think will be the single most exciting EV performance driving experience, the biggest thrills you can get driving an EV.
Well, I, I kind of I kind of have goosebumps right now. I've been waiting for this moment, you know, ever since I saw this John Frankenheimer movie with these fantastic real-life car chases in south of France. I was just thinking, how can we make an EV supercar that really gives all these emotions and also kind of that sense of occasion? And, you know, obviously, that's without the gasoline engine and all that stuff. So I love that raw excitement. So I really wanted to create a timeless modern performance EV, something that can really make your heart you know, pump, get super excited about it. And I'm really excited about this car. I, I want to show it, and I'm going to say we're going to make it. So this is the EV for somebody who craves what's next. I think it's in the category of one, but you judge. Let's take a look at it. Meet the Ronin. So the electric Ronin is actually the world's first four-door convertible. And of course, it's got a carbon fiber hardtop. But this is really about redefining the supercar. You know, what is in the future? We want the ultimate driving experience. We wanted a new type of luxury. So we are working on the interior, which completely will redefine luxury. We are going away from traditional chrome and, and wood in the interior and really coming up with something new. I'm super excited about that. But also, let's talk a little bit about the technology in the Ronin. Because we see the Ronin as being, as being the technology carrier for Fisker, where we can showcase all our new things in this vehicle. Let's start, for example, with the integrated battery pack. So there is already some integrated battery pack ideas out there. and and. You know, of course, we know about those, but we have actually looked at something different. We're looking at integrating the cells into the structure of the body. And that will give us our goal of getting to 600 mile range. That's kind of a lot. And the reason we are going for a 600 mile range is because this is a luxury GT, Gran Turismo. You want to drive from Los Angeles to Napa Valley or from Paris to Saint Tropez or wherever, and you just want to drive, you just want to have fun. You don't want to think about when you have to stop, you just want to have fun in this vehicle. So that's why we went for this long range, and I think it's important. Second part, having fun, yes, it's got supercar performance, zero to 60 around two seconds, and of course, over a thousand horsepower, and to capture all that, of course, four wheel drive and a tri motor setup. And of course, we're also going to include some active aerodynamics that we are working on as well. Now, take a little bit of a look at this sculptural design. It does have the sort of signature that we are standing for, which is really the sculptured wheel arches, low slung. But despite that, it actually have seats for five people, which is pretty amazing. We also have four doors, and it's actually butterfly doors, as you saw, open up this way and open up behind. So it's probably going to be the easiest to get into convertible that you've ever seen or been in. And of course, finally, I think 
the reason we are showing this kind, the reason we are building it, of course, we want it to be the top of the brand, but we're also using some of these design cues on this vehicle. For example, this new layout of the front headlamps, you're going to see that in some other cars today. It kind of will uh, be sort of a trademark of Fisker. Uh, of course, with the top down, you know, this is a family excursion. I mean, maybe this becomes a lifetime experience driving this car with your family. You can fit them all in there. And it's a true sports car, it's a true open car. And of course, when you close it, it becomes a sports sedan, which is kind of cool as well. Coming back to sort of the new type of luxury, you know, we believe in creating something completely different. And in this vehicle, you know, it's a vehicle where it's not about the roar. It's about when you drive, you're hearing the, maybe the birds sing, you're out the fresh air. And I think that's going to be a complete different experience. And I think getting inside this car through these butterfly doors, I think that's where you're going to get that sense of occasion. You're in something new. By the way, uh, this vehicle we're expecting to come out in towards the end of 2025. Now, I know I said I love those uh, Frankenheim, Frankenheimer film of the car chases. Of course, now it's not about, like I mentioned, the roar of the engine. It's really about enjoying nature and enjoying a vehicle like that without necessarily relying on an engine noise. So that's the dream. That's the Ronin. Henrik, Henrik, quick, I have a question for you. Actually, I have two questions. Oh. Did you say 1,000 horsepower? 1,000 horsepower. All right, yeah. so I've always wanted to ask this. What do you do with 1,000 horsepower? Like, what, in a car like this, give me an example of, like, how 1,000 horsepower would come in handy. I mean, I think there's many normal examples of that. For example, let's say you're driving an Autobahn in Germany, sure. and you're chasing an international, you know, criminal syndicate. Okay. You want to want to get out of there fast, and I've also seen that happen in Paris, by the way. Right. So that can happen to you, and then right. you need the thousand horsepower. It's like a real world example. It's like a real world example. Okay, no, right perfect. There. I got it. Um, and and you mentioned the, the the technology, the headlights. Are there other vehicles? You mentioned there might be some on other vehicles. Are there other ones that you have in the works? We have some other stuff in the works. Absolutely, uh, I think uh, you're going to see something right now. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Let's take a look at it. All right, let's see. Let's meet Pear, which stands for, by the way, Personal Electric Automotive Revolution. You know, we really want to design this vehicle here for today's and future's lifestyles. You know, you think about cars, they've kind of not changed much the last 50 years when you think about different utility aspects of a car. So with the Pear, we actually started out looking at young people's lifestyles in big cities around the world. What, what, do they, what do they do every day? What do they want out of a car? You know, young people living in cities. How will digital natives use a vehicle in the future? So we designed a lot of flexible spaces in this, in this vehicle, flexible storage. I mean, you saw that kind of drawer that comes out, which we actually call a front boot, which is fruit. Now, I don't know if that's really a great word, but that, we were very excited about it. We might change that. Um, anyway, uh, but it also has, you know, as you saw, the Houdini trunk. And there was a reason why we made that Houdini trunk. That was part of that whole study. And when you think about you're maybe living in a big city, you're parking on the street, and 
During the night, a big van comes up right behind you, and you come out in the morning, you want to throw something in your hatchback, and you can't open it. So that solves this problem. And I want to take a look at, again, you know, what does this trunk here do? The window comes down, as you see here, and then basically the trunk goes down and disappears inside. Now, one of the important things I want to say with this vehicle, it also had a couple of other reasons. So, for example, there are some old cities where you have a very low parking garage, and again, you can hit your hatchback in the roof on those garages, but this doesn't happen here. And in fact, it's also really easy to walk over to the vehicle and throw something in the vehicle, super easy. We can close that again. And coming a little bit back to the spaciousness of this car, I want to ask the people inside the car to come out, and I want to remember, this is a compact car, and there is two rows of seats in this car. As you can see, four doors. And people just keep coming out, by the way. <laughs> so what we have here is actually a car. With, we actually have a car here. As you can see, six people fits in the car, which is quite unique in a two-row uh, vehicle. And this is why this matters, because if you want six people in a car today, you normally have to buy a three-row vehicle, which becomes much larger, much more impact on the environment. In this vehicle, you can actually get all these people in the car. And the way we did that, in the front here, you will see that there actually is a bench seat. Instead of a one seat for the passenger, there's a bench seat where you can put two people, or you can just sit one person as well. So we'll offer this vehicle both as a six-seater, but also as a traditional five-seater with a unique storage right between the people, uh, a very big center console. Here we decided to show the six-person variant. You can also see inside this vehicle, there's a lot of new type of storage place. If you look at the whole dash, everything in the dash is about storage. We've got some rubber bands where you can fasten things. So it's all about being able to put stuff in different places easily. What's also unique about this car is that we actually have something called the lounge mode, where you can move the front seats forward, fold them down, and the rear seat you can fold down. So you can actually sleep in this car if you want. You can just lounge. And in the five-seat version, we offer the big 17.1-inch rotatable ocean screen, which really means that you can actually lounge in here and watch a movie. I also want to point something else out. Uh, just talking about, you know, as you all know, we want this to be a very affordable vehicle. So we took a different design approach on this vehicle. For example, I want to highlight the armrest over there. So the armrest in this vehicle, we only have one armrest. Now, you know, you, I, I know you're thinking, well, who's getting that armrest of these four doors? <laughs> well, actually, we just designed one symmetric armrest, and it's used for all four doors. That means one part number. So if any, every, somebody has to get fixed an armrest, we just have to send one armrest. We don't have to ask which door is it. But it, of course, also lowers the cost, lowers the tooling, everything else. That was a theme we took throughout the car. But I want to talk a little bit about how else did we get to the low cost of producing this car? How are we doing that? Well, this vehicle is sitting on a new platform called SLV-1. And that stands for simple, versatile, and volume. So what's unique about this platform is it started as a steel plus plus. We called it that, the whole idea of how do we make this vehicle. And the steel plus plus concept was a concept where we want to take very, we want to take parts out of the car. We want to reduce the part count. And we actually ended up with reducing the parts count in that vehicle of 35%, 35% reduction in parts count. That's a lot. That means it's going to be a lot easier to manufacture this vehicle, a lot e easier to assemble it. And just think about, we talked about earlier shipping parts, 35% less parts in this vehicle, which is quite unique. I also just want to talk a little bit about the exterior design because we talked about some of the things going forward to certain things or, or fitting in from, from the, the Ronin over here. So look at those headlamps. They're kind of cool. And of course, they're inspired a little bit by the Ronin. So you're going to get drizzled a little bit of supercar stuff into this vehicle as well, despite the price. And you look at these sculptured fenders. Look at this, the sculpture design. 
we are going for something very unique here, which is getting away from all this clutter. It's just a very pure, clean design. And we really looked at doing something new also on the upper area of the vehicle. We kind of took inspiration from sort of the glider planes, which are super smooth and aerodynamic. So you see here at the rear, there is a window which is totally flush with the rest of the body, which is kind of cool, and I can show it over here as well. You kind of see this window here is totally flush, and it's just rolling up here, which is very, very smooth, very cool, very aerodynamic. And when you look at the rear, uh, you can see these tail lamps here. They're just thin, wrap around, but it's actually one large spoiler that also helped this being much smoother in the wind. And then going to the front, like I mentioned earlier, kind of every design detail we, we did in this vehicle was really about, you know, how do you use a vehicle and what do we want to achieve? So if you look at the front, we actually have this very unique wraparound windscreen and we have a low cowl. And the reason we did that was, again, we want to have that glider plane feeling with this giant panoramic view as you're driving around in the city. You want to have the best possible view all the way out you know, whenever you're driving around. This is the, th that's what you want in the city. And that's why we designed this kind of super curvy front windscreen. All right, so let me come to something very important. I can 100% confirm, because we have pretty much finished developing and designing this vehicle. We, of course, now are working with suppliers. But I can confirm that this vehicle will start at $29,900. And that means after, after federal incentives, because we're going to build it here in the U.S., the price will be $22,400. I mean, I mean that's, that's, that's a heck of a lot of car for money, I think, and a pretty cool car as well. And I think with all these different details, we actually can also broaden our market appeal to many different things that this car can be used for. For example, putting food here in the fruit so you don't have it smelling inside the car, etc. So we have a lot of kind of cool things that we'll start showing off in this vehicle as we move forward. Now, this vehicle will come in mid-2025, and the pair is our vision of a sustainable EV as a connected mobility device. This is the pair. Henrik. Henrik. Oh. Couple questions. Fascinating technology. Remind me, SLV1, simple, light, volume? Simple, light, volume. Simple, light, volume, yeah. okay. And how long were those six people in that car before you took them out? I think they were in there since this morning at 6 a.m. No, no, right? I'm just kidding. Oh, they were no. in there for an hour, yeah. and we, did, we do have lounge mode. Oh, so right, I think lounge they were doing mode. okay. Yeah, right, I think right. they were fine. Um, and then um, can you give us a little more about the technology that's in this vehicle? Yeah, I didn't mention that, by the way. So. Uh, in this vehicle, we will have a new supercomputer powering this vehicle. Uh, we are developing it in-house, but I want our CTO to talk about that. Oh, yeah, great. I okay. think he should talk about that. Great. So let's see a little bit about that supercomputer. I think it's going to be very exciting. Let's take a look at it. To go another level deeper into the technology that's powering Pair, please welcome Chief Technology Officer Dr. Buchart Hunke and Technical Partnerships Manager Charles Kao for a conversation about the technology in the next generation of Fisker EVs. Charles. All right, so thank you, Andrew, and thank you, everyone, for the applause as well. Buchart, it's really exciting to be sitting here with you today. And as Henrik mentioned, we've kind of already gone through this shift from internal combustion engines to 
sitting here surrounded by really these awesome EVs. But there's another shift happening, which is all of these cars are getting smarter and smarter. So it looks like you brought something for show and tell today. So let's just get to it. Why don't you tell us what is this Fisker Blade computer and what are some of the influences that went into designing it? Sure. Uh, thank you, Charles. So vehicles are data generating powerhouses. So uh, they can crank out a staggering four gigabytes of data per second. So it needs um, massive data crunches with efficient pipelines mm. to transport the information in the car. And we've developed this Fisca Blade a uh, blazing fast high performance computer, as you can see here. A single slim box uh, modular design yeah. and uh, fully upgradable. Um, and with a high, high performance computer, an asymmetric uh, processor architecture, multi gigabit Ethernet, 5G Wi Fi um, Internet, uh, every car becomes now a mini data center. That's exciting. Um, in comparison, we have reduced ocean architecture for eight, from eight main domain controllers now to just two high-performance computers. And that really makes our future vehicles software-defined. Um, our approach is simple. Uh, no byte is left behind okay. uh, to deliver an incredibly immersive customer experience. Yeah, OK. No byte left behind. I, I like the saying. I like the approach. How do you believe we're actually going to accomplish no bite left behind? There's a lot of technology that goes into it. So what kind of competencies have we actually built here at Fisker? So first of all, uh, this Fisker blade is a product of our own internal vision. And uh, we, have, uh, we are fully in control of the development of the design. Uh, from innovations from SOC uh, uh, selection to board design uh, to the software integration, software development. Um, and I have to say, our team rocks uh, to develop and design top-notch software and hardware. We have SOC designers, uh, yeah. PCB designers, EE integrators, software designers. It's, it's a dream team. And uh, being in control makes us, of course, uh, very agile and uh, allows us also to set the pace of innovations. And uh, oh, and guess what? Uh, we have got the ownership of our operating system. And uh, having that means yeah. we can make it super efficient, um, uh, functional, safe, and cyber secure. <laughs> so we have got this uh, awesome triple shift left approach. Um, that means system level modeling, yeah. software in the loop testing, to virtual prototyping, we call it digital twins, uh, really bringing in quality way earlier uh, into our system development. Yeah, great. I know this is a technology session, but thank you for saying our team rocks. Our team definitely rocks. You brought a real computer with you today. I think everyone would love to hear. Uh, maybe go over some highlights or some qualities you think that actually set it apart. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Charles, you wouldn't believe, our system is a powerhouse uh, delivering an impressive 6.2 teraflops of high performance, which puts us right up there with the best. Right. And, uh, but our true strength uh, lies in our commitment to power efficiency. Yeah. And we've designed to be power efficient, uh, getting more performance uh, per watt. And that means lower power consumption benefits through a longer uh, range and better lifetime of the battery. Mm -hmm. um, so our innovative asymmetric uh, compute architecture has distributed processing costs for operations, such as high performance computing, for instance, for AI accelerators or graphics rendering mm. and other tasks. And, um, uh, Charles, we'll get up to 25% more performance per watt compared to right. benchmarks. Hmm. So right. stay tuned for more updates coming soon. Yeah, all right. Very impressive, Burkhardt. Thank you. We've got time for one final question. You've mentioned a lot about the high performance, how we're going to do it, all the connectivity that comes with it. Let's just bring it all on home. What does that actually mean for us? What does, how does this computer actually help us define the next generation of vehicles? Yeah, so first of all, um, 
introducing uh, Fisker Blade with our cutting edge uh, 5G Wi-Fi 6 uh, connectivity takes the experience to a whole new level. It connects uh, with our Fisker Cloud and uh, we own the Fisker Pipeline. So beyond over the air updates, our vehicles uh, seamlessly interact with the digital world around us, oh. smart cities, uh, smart homes, and even smart devices and wearables. Uh, we're not just uh, leaving the data analytics now to the cloud. Uh, Blade allows us actually to build in uh, intelligence into the car and analyze data inside of the car. So to identify patterns with AI or machine learning can uh, predict failures before they occur and uh, improving overall customer experience, of course. Um, additionally, swarm intelligence, uh, connecting the entire fleet, uh, it gets smarter through decentralized exchange of intelligence, we would yeah. say it like that. And Fisker technology makes our vehicles smarter, safer, and perform better over the lifetime of the vehicle. Yeah, that sounds fantastic, Burkhardt. That's all the time we have. I'll just leave with a final comment, though. Considering this computer does everything you just said in a package this small, I have to say it's very impressive. And if you plan to put this in a $22,000 car, even more impressive. We will. All right. Well, I'll hold you to your word. <laughs> Back to you, Andrew. Thank you, yeah. so. thank you Charles. Thank you, Bukhart. Fascinating conversation. We want to thank you all for spending time with us today, learning about Fisker's product vision for the next few years, and about our vision. Andrew, hold on. Future. Ho ho hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Dude, I'm doing my ending. You no, know, no, but no, I think we got a couple really more minutes, good. right? What? All right. Well, I'm just thinking that I had something on the drawing board. Oh, like a sketch? I kind of, yeah, I kind of want okay. to share that. Okay. So what do you, what do you think? What are you, like in your pocket or something? No, no, no. I, I gave it over there. So we have like oh, a... Oh, they going to put it up on yeah, the screen? Yeah, we got like a little thing on the screen. Oh. So right. let's just take a yeah, look at that. Yeah, let's take a look. Great. Right. Let's take a look at that. That was not a sketch, okay? Yeah. You knew this was happening? I, 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 well, rehearsed, I gave man. it the video just before we got in here. You got to, oh, right before we came Yeah, in. just before we came All right, fantastic. Yeah. Well, great way to end today. So thank you, everyone. No, hold it, hold, it, hold, hold it. We're not ending yet. We, look, we're a car company. We, we started delivering our first cars. People are driving around in our cars. We can't just show a PowerPoint or a video. We, okay. we, we got to do the real deal. What do you guys think? Yeah. 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 Like a little matchbox car? Not a matchbox car. You know, we, you know, this car has to be the real deal, and it's so exciting. I mean, I, I'm, I said I had goosebumps before. I had goosebumps here, but I have it again now. This is super exciting. I want you to meet the Alaska, our advanced pickup truck. Wow. All right. So that's definitely a completely different take on a pickup truck. It's obviously super sporty. I mean, just look at those wheel arches. Look at the clean body, the muscles in the front. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Look at that, those thin tail lamps, the lights here. I mean, this is just, I mean, it, it's kind of really cool in my opinion. I can't wait to get out in this one here. Now, what, when we did this vehicle, by the way, we were thinking about pickup trucks. I mean, it's a super hot market. 
And, uh, you know, of course, there are some amazing full-size pickup trucks out there. So we didn't really want to go in that market. We also figured out, you know, we looked into how are people actually using these pickup trucks. And, of course, pickup trucks are getting used as pickup trucks, but they're also driven daily. A lot of people drive these cars to go shopping, to put the kids in school, or drive to work. So we wanted to have a pickup truck that had both the, the pickup truck efficiency and usability, but also was a great driver's car. You know, great road holding, great ride, fun to drive. And this vehicle is actually built on a platform we call the FT31, but it's really a modified stressed ocean platform, which means we can get this vehicle into production fairly quickly. Uh, it's going to be really dynamic, very responsive, with the convenience on a pickup truck. But we thought we got to do something really unique. So with this rear bed, we of course have sort of in this class, I don't even know what class this is because we didn't really want to follow anybody. So it's probably somewhere between a compact and a mid-sized pickup truck. And most of those in this class have like a four and a half foot bed, which we do. So if you open up the bed here electrically, uh, we, we then thought we got to find a way to kind of get a full size, you know, bed on here. And what everybody else does is you have to kind of order what bed you want. But we thought, no, let's have it in the same vehicle. So we actually have the Houdini trunk here in this vehicle as well, as well where you can lower the entire area and then you can actually shoot through long items when you need. You can, of course, fold down all the seats. And in that, when it's like this, it's actually seven and a half foot long as a full-size pickup truck. So when you do need to go out and get your Christmas tree or something long, you can actually do that. And if you go all the way to the edge of here, of the actual tailgate, it's 9.6 feet long. I would say anybody wow. could fit in there and sleep, yeah. quite frankly. Yeah, so. amazing. So of course, a Fisker have to have four features. So this is one of them. But this will also be the world's most sustainable pickup truck. Again, a lot of use of sustainable materials. And it will be the world's lightest electric pickup truck. The lightest. We expect a range of around 230 to 340 miles, which I think is pretty good. That will give sort of the versatility of what you need in this vehicle. And of course, we also got some pretty cool interior features as well. And I'll come to this side here. You can Wait, just so stay in there and hold them, hold it. We're going to take off shortly. Just stay in here. We'll take off shortly. Okay. So I just want to show over here some cool things. We got like... Henrik, is there going to be like, you know, a California mode version for this? Like Yellowstone mode or something? No. something? So we have something else that's much cooler. We have big gulp mode. So if you see here, this is the world's largest cup holder, which is really cool. And I'm going to have a little sip here. Ah, somebody put vodka in. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. This Great. is water. This is water. Uh, so this is, this is, we did a lot of cool stuff in here. And coming back to sustainability, look at this really cool material here, if you guys can see it. Um, this is actually feels like a fabric, but it's actually reclaimed wood that's going under a special treatment to feel like fabric. And it looks like wood. It's really cool. And the whole theme in here is kind of like the forest theme, which, which I really think is cool. We also have here behind, I probably have to step out so maybe you can film it. We have here behind, maybe you can step out, yeah. So we have here behind, we have a cowboy hat holder. <laughs> so when you're, you know, you're driving, you want to just scoot that cowboy hat in here. I think that's a pretty cool feature. That's great. And then, you know, all pickup truck always have that sliding window. Now, if you have a large cap like this, you obviously have to have a super long arm to be able to slide it. So instead, of course, we have that ro screen that rolls down at the rear, which is part of our Houdini trunk, which really means you also get California mode in this vehicle, right. which I think is pretty cool. Now, all this together, uh, we are going to start the price with this vehicle at 45,400 before incentives and 37,900 after or with incentives. Right, amazing. And as I mentioned, we want to bring this out as fast as we can and grab 
part of this pickup market, and specifically in this market, if you think about it, how many sort of 37,000 electric pickup trucks is there that also have a possibility of a seven and a half foot bed? I don't think you can count any yet. Yeah. So because we are basing this a lot on the ocean, we can get this to market very fast. My people tell me first quarter of 2025, I've told them I need a truck December 2024. Wow. But, but I get... I get this one, right? No, that, that's mine. That I'm going to drive that home tonight. Right, that's yeah. I'm going to put the pair in the, in the back. <laughs> All right. So now you have met the family, the Fisca family here of cars. And uh, I think it's very important for us to say that we want to create unique vehicles. And I think we showed you today with the Force E, of course, the Ocean, we already have the market, the Force E, the pair. That's, I think, I mean, this is going to be I, for, for sure a best seller. And one day I want to get to one million a year in this. Of course, not just producing one factory and several factories. We got the Alaska here, which I think is really, really exciting. And of course, the Ronin, crazy supercar. We're going to make very few of those. It'll be hand built. Um, but in well, the end of the day. Let yeah. me ask you a question. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. There's, so obviously you've got an incredible lineup here, but yeah. can you tell everyone? why you wanted to have this product vision day. What, what was it about having today that was important to you? So I think it was really important for us to have product vision day. And the reason is that it doesn't matter how many billions you have, how many factories you have, the automotive industry is all about product that sells. There's many examples out there of you know, companies who's tried to make EVs and they quite frankly didn't sell. I think we have showed with the ocean that we can get a ton of orders. We actually got them even before we, anybody's even driven the car. And now that they're driving it, they love it. So a ton of orders from the ocean. I think we're showing vehicles here that is going to be sales successes. Yeah. And I believe in the next two years, there is a huge pie, the entire market, where whoever comes in to this market in these different segments will have a huge opportunity to take a big chunk of this market because in the next two years, we are still going to have segments where there is certain segments, there is no EVs or very few EVs. For example, a 37,000 electric pickup truck, a $22,000, you know, five, six seater electric vehicle. That's right. cool. So that's really the opportunity. So we want to get these vehicles as fast as we can to the market right. and take a big market share before anybody else have time to come in. And the reason we decided to show it, you know, now, because we know that even if somebody gets a good idea out there and see them, it takes them four years to bring a car to the market. So they're out of that span of the next two years. Right. Right. That's it. <laughs> All right. Now, let me just end here. Let's just end for a moment here with something very serious. I would, I would first like to thank everybody that came here today. Uh, I would like to thank all our amazing employees that is working super hard uh, every day, seven days a week, sometimes 18 hours a day. It's been crazy what we have achieved. But I also want to thank actually everybody at home for, for watching. And I want to thank our reservation holders, our customers that are with us on this journey as early adopters. And it's really amazing. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. And let's bring our pre uh, presenters on stage. Let's bring our speakers out real quickly. All right. Let's get everybody on the All stage. Right, let's get everybody out here. By the way, all these vehicles are available to reserve on our website. And if you use your app, you have to update your app. But you can reserve all these vehicles from this moment. Good night. All right. All right. And, and now, for real, I can, I can do real, it now. Man, I can do it now. Yeah. Thank you. For real, thank you all for joining us to learn about the product vision for the next few years and about our vision of a clean future for all. And for those of you who want to get a closer look at the vehicles, come on down, and we will be happy to show you these amazing lineups. Thank you.